Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. After kind of reading through all the comments, it looks like today we're gonna to go through my light build. How was that? That was pretty good. I'm not actually reading any comments. This is actually the manual for this light. I actually use my phone to record, so let's get to it. So before we do get started, just kind of a quick disclaimer, um, I am in no way sponsored by the 8020 website, uh, though if they like to sponsor me, that'd be really cool. But yeah, let's go ahead and get the show started. So what I'm going to be doing is we're kind of just going to number everything off. I'll put everything in the description uh, to this YouTube video that'll show every piece uh, that I kind of used. So you kind of get an idea, you know, make your own decisions, your own design. Uh, but this is kind of what I did. And the whole, whole theory of um, putting this together was to over reinforce it. Uh, the reason being is the lights I'm going to be using are the Orphic um, icons which are really heavy they're about 15 pounds a piece versus for example your radions are like five which you know sub substantially different so just for peace of mind i wanted to make sure that everything was reinforced you know beyond my possible needs just to make sure nothing ever happened now or in the future now to get started uh first thing we have is the piece that is connected to the wall itself uh, it is an 80 by 20, I think it's called an adjacent T-slot, and it's going to be used for two reasons. Uh, number one, it is flatter than, for example, this profile, uh, which is square. And number two, there's two points of contact so I can make it extra strong. Like I mentioned, everything here is going for performance and just being overkill as far as being able to hold up lights. So this piece itself is going to be about 40 inches and it is mounted into four studs. So instead of having to worry about like one stud giving way, um, I have four studs. So the chances of anything happening are pretty low. I mean, if you think about it, these studs are holding like an entire building together. Uh, so I doubt it'll have any problems holding up a couple of lights. And just to make sure that there isn't any kind of like bending or um, any weight issues, we have a second one that is about 20 inches higher. And same thing, it's going to be mounted onto just these four studs right here, uh, just to make it super, super strong. Now the second item on the list is just going to be these 45 degree connectors. Uh, really, they're just going to be holding, you know, the two pieces together uh, between the part facing the wall and, of course, the actual light bar itself. Uh, nothing too interesting there. Uh, I did have four on each one, so four here and four there, and really that same thing just makes it super strong. Chances of you know these lights slipping at any point is pretty low because there's four points of contact and then another four points of contact. Uh, so the chances of failure are just a lot lower. And you wanna think about these things just because once I have this 200, tank, 200 gallon tank mounted against the wall, not fully mounted, but you know, pretty close, uh, there's no kind of turning back. So I do have to make sure this guy is as structurally sound as possible. Now, all the actual light stand parts, for example, this vertical piece, and then this horizontal piece, and then the bar itself uh, that's gonna hold the lights, uh, these are 15, 15 lights. Uh, so they're a little bit, uh, they have a little bit less material than the standard T-slots. So if you look at the bar itself, they've drilled out, you know, a little bit. They've basically removed some material just to make it a little bit lighter, which does, you know, a couple great things. One, it's still pretty structurally sound. Uh, two, it's gonna cost less. And then of course, the only other last part is going to be uh, what's holding the 45 degree angles together. Uh, the first is this piece right here, which is like a 45 degree angle. Uh, this is a six inch, so it is a little bit uh, on the bigger side, 
but it does a pretty good job just holding these two pieces together. Uh, there is one more piece called a milling connector uh, that is going to be holding these two bits together. You can't see it because it's on the top. And then lastly, there is the 45, uh, like a 90 degree plate. I don't remember what this one's called, but I'll link it. Uh, but that's just another piece just to reinforce this like 90 degree bed right here. And I've only put them on the inside portion. You see right there, same thing here. It's actually on the other side. Uh, the reason I put it there is just because it kind of looks really ugly. Um, you know, it doesn't look that great. So I just put it on the inside. So from the side, I can still see this little cut right here. Um, so it just looks better, you know? Because of course, you know, I still want it to be pleasing to look at. And I don't want to look at these big black screws and that big plate all the time. Uh, but same thing, it's just adding those extra pieces just to try to make it as sound as possible. And like I said, it is actually pretty darn strong, luckily. Uh, so I shouldn't have any issues mounting the lights. Now the Orphic lights themselves are going to be 15 pounds a piece, and I'm probably gonna do three of them. Or it's gonna be two Orphic icons and then one Kessel at some point. Uh, but you'll see that in just a couple seconds. Now the last little tidbit of information is uh, a lot of people are going to mention uh, if they can mount these on the tank itself, which of course you definitely can. Um, it's going to require just the kind of a different set of parts. Other people have made YouTube videos about it, so I'm not going to. Um, of course, I didn't really have that option with this tank just because it's this flimsy board. Uh, but for example, my old Red Sea Reefer, the 525, uh, the full back is actually plywood um, or whatever you know they use for the tank so it's a lot stronger it's a lot uh, thicker so you can actually mount something on it but unfortunately you know on this tank it wasn't an option but of course I probably wouldn't have because I just spent seven thousand dollars on this tank and it kind of wouldn't make sense to just start drilling holes in it so I am kind of glad I put it into the wall itself and of course, if I ever move, it's just, you know, eight holes that I can just quickly, whatever you do that, whatever that thing is. I've done it before, but I don't remember what it's called right now. All right, so it's been a few more days and I finally got all the parts for the 8020 uh, aluminum build. So I was finally able to put this bar up. I kind of ran out of those uh, black screws uh, that go into the T-slots. So unfortunately I couldn't put it all together, but we finally got that together and we finally got the lights in place. So we're going to go with these beautiful Orphic icons. I currently just have the two of them. Uh, and then I hope down the line, we're going to put a big old Kessel right here. Uh, the A500X, just like a freaking missile shooting straight down into the tank. Uh, I think it's gonna look awesome. Uh, overall, these lights themselves, uh, people keep complaining about them. And honestly, I think they're one of the best looking lights on the market. It is just so nice, especially because this is kind of like a aluminum. And also this piece here is aluminum. So it looks like it fits, which is just absolutely great. But that's the full view of the tank itself. Uh, the structure itself is super strong. Uh, it has almost no give to it. I doubt it's, you know, ever going to fall. Uh, cross your fingers. Whatever, no bad luck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's super nice. And the only other thing I kind of want to mention is I did also uh, put together this right here. Uh, that's the Red Sea DIY kit. Uh, but as you can see here, well, it might be kind of hard to see, but this is actually not the clear um, plastic mesh that they normally give you. This is actually the black one, which I think makes it look so much more sleek. It's really cool. Um, it matches the black Euro bracing right here. I was considering going with like a, um, like a polycarbonate lid, like all those lid makers make, but it only comes in clear or kind of like a whitish color. So I didn't think it would look very good. So I went with this black um, Red Sea DIY kit and then just put the black mesh. And I think it just looks so much cleaner. We can actually go over to my other tank and you can see 
Um, obviously, it's kind of hard to see because this one is it's just so blue right now. But this is actually clear, and you can see the contrast between the two. So it's super noticeable. Uh, but with this new one, it is just all black on black, silver on silver, you know, white just all the way through. So they're nice, it's real sleek. I really don't want any wire showing. I just want this thing to be just ridiculously clean all the time. But yeah, that is pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully, um, I'm not really good at you know putting all these parts together and everything. So hopefully this episode kind of makes sense. Um, I'll try to list everything below uh, in the comments of every part I used in order of how I put it together. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys as always for watching. I've been getting a lot of support, which is really cool. Um, and in the next episode, we're probably going to go ahead and start cycling the tank. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace.